Hello, everybody. This is Superintendent John Vinoy. I would like to take this time to go over the back to school plan. Um, but before I do that, let me start off by saying these plans have changed multiple times over the summer and will continue to change throughout the month of August. I will try to get word out the best I can, as soon as I can, on the definitive return plan for the Sharpsville Area School District. Let me start off by thanking some individuals that go back to last school year. Let me start first with our students. Thank you very much. You guys were put in the most difficult situation as were your families. Uh, living rooms turned into classrooms. So I thank you very much for everything that you guys did. To our professional staff and support staff, thank you for in a 10 day period taking us from a traditional setting to an online platform. And thank you to the administrative team and school board for your support. Uh, we are much stronger when we all work together. Our plan in the Sharpsville Area School District, provided that we remain in the green phase, is not only to reopen school, but to remain open. Okay, there are certain things that all of us can do to assist to make sure that this goal becomes reality. Things like symptom and temperature checks at home, staying home if you're sick, washing your hands after you cough or sneeze into your elbow, following it up with washing your hands, maintaining social distancing, Eliminating touching the face or eyes or touching other people, eliminating or limiting the sharing of equipment, and making sure that we're all wearing the proper PPE. We fully anticipate there will be students and staff that are absent throughout the school year. You know, one of the things that I want to make it perfectly clear if you're sick, stay at home. No one needs to tough it out. No one needs to come to school or work if they're sick. Uh, secondly, it's likely that during the course of the school year, Students and staff will be required to quarantine uh, if they've been in contact with a person who's tested positive for COVID-19. Some guidance that I put together, some situational questions and responses. I've already mentioned if you're sick, please stay at home. You know, do us all a favor. If your temperature is 100.4 or above, stay home until you're fever free without medication for 72 hours. If you have multiple symptoms and suspect that you may have direct primary exposure to a person who's COVID positive, follow Pennsylvania Department of Health guidelines. If you were told by the Pennsylvania Department of Health that you've been contact traced as being exposed, here again, follow the guidelines. If you return from a COVID-19 hotspot as defined by the Pennsylvania Department of Health, the recommendation and suggestion is that you quarantine for 14 days or have a negative test after being home for 72 hours. If you are within close proximity to someone who was in close proximity to another person who tested positive for COVID-19, you should limit your unnecessary travel, take your temperature daily, and monitor yourself for symptoms. When can you return to school or work after a confirmed case? Follow the Pennsylvania Department of Health guidance and advice. Where can I get tested for COVID-19? Go to any Pennsylvania Department of Health approved testing center. The Sharpsville Area School District will follow Governor Wolf and the Department of Health's order on the wearing of masks. Any staff or student above the age of two will be required to wear a mask throughout the school day. Anyone with a medical condition that would prevent them from wearing a mask or face covering must provide medical documentation to the school district prior to September 3rd. Anyone with continual non-compliance of the mask rule will face disciplinary action. For those students with disabilities, any student who cannot wear a mask or face shield due to a medical condition, including those with respiratory issues that impede breathing, have a mental health condition or disability, and students who are unable to remove a mask without assistance are not required to wear face coverings. Individuals who are communicating or seeking to communicate with someone who is hearing impaired or has another disability where the ability to see the mouth is essential to communication are not required to wear a mask. However, individuals should consider another type of face covering such as a plastic face shield. We will do our very best to follow the guidelines of the six foot social distancing recommendation. When can you take your mask off? First scenario, eating or drinking, when you're spaced out at least six feet. We will try our very best in our cafeterias to social distance students. That being said, six feet presents a problem for any school setting, not just here at Sharpsville, but any other school district. We may not always be within the six foot rule. It may be five feet, 
we will do it to the greatest extent possible. Number two, you can remove your mask if you're seated at a desk or assigned a work area where you're spaced at least six feet from other individuals. And third, engage in an activity where you're six feet apart. Based on conditions, we will operate on a green, yellow, red format. In the green scenario, it's a full return to start the school year. Measures will be taken to limit possible spread of the disease. Students will unavoidably be in close proximity to each other. In the yellow remote format, this will be entirely different from what we did last school year. Students will be at home, staff will be here on site. We will follow a live teaching model. A traditional grading system will be used. In the red scenario, both students and staff will be at home following a live teaching model. We as a district and an educational community must be prepared to shift from one option to the other as circumstances warrant. Under the green phase, the green light, all students will return to school together. Social distancing guidelines will be in place to the greatest extent possible. Extensive disinfecting during the school day and evening hours will take place. Transportation and social distancing obviously present some challenges for the district. Some degree of close physical interaction among students will be unavoidable. The training of our staff to meet both instructional and safety requirements will be in place. Option two, remote learning. As I mentioned, this will be entirely different from last school year. In this option, K-12 students will utilize a live remote learning format taught by the respective teachers. All students will remote and all teaching staff will be on site. All teachers and students will follow their schedules. Traditional grading will be in place. Attendance will be mandatory and taken each period. We will be required to meet all state guidelines and recommendations for a 180-day school year put forth by the Pennsylvania Department of Education. The district will do 180 days of instruction, whether that's on-site, remote, or a combination of the two. In the red scenario, all students and staff will operate on a remote live teaching model. Students and staff will follow their schedules. Traditional grading will still be in place. Attendance, once again, will be mandatory and taken with each class period. Best case scenario, we will return on September 3rd for a full return K-12. Anything short of a full return for all of our students creates hardships for our students, families, and community. It also limits the district's ability to provide the appropriate education that all of our students deserve. Our back to school plan, health and safety plan, will be updated at the August school board meeting. It can be located on the district website it's found in the new section entitled Reopening Guidelines. Back to school items. In addition to the typical and standard back to school items, please consider including masks and hand sanitizer. We will have masks available in all three offices and on the school buses in the event that students forget a mask. The small travel or trial size hand sanitizer would be the appropriate size to send to school. These are good items for student lockers, desks, or book bags. Some final thoughts. All plans are incomplete at best, and they're ever-changing. We as educational leaders have faced great uncertainty since March 13th. There has been no playbook for the challenges that we have all collectively faced. I will be sending home electronically an eight-question survey that will greatly assist us in putting together the final preparations for the return to school plan. I'm asking you for 100% cooperation in completing this survey. The results will be due by this Friday, August 7th. Anything short of a full return, we will likely face undesirable trade-offs. Some things that district has done to step up cleaning and sanitation in preparation for the upcoming school year. Water stations will soon replace the traditional water fountains. Touchless water faucets and touchless hand dryers will be installed in all restrooms throughout campus. Hand sanitizer stations will be located in each classroom. We've added numerous cleaning items to assist our cleaning and maintenance staff in the sanitation and cleaning of our schools. We will have masks and shields available. Plexiglass will be installed in the office areas. 
around cash registers in the cafeteria and in the serving lines in our kitchens. We will also have signage throughout all three buildings. I thank you for your support. I will get information out to you as the situation warrants. Please check the school district app, Facebook page or website for future updates. Until then, take care. I thank you and look forward to the first day of school on September 3rd.